I also do want to greet our online family uh, who's joining us every single Sunday. Yeah, you could put, we love to clap here. Thank you. We love you guys. Thanks for joining us. We're jumping into our uh, series, our second week in life traction, gaining momentum in life where it matters most. John 10.10 says that the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. Everyone say full. Jesus didn't come to give you an average, ordinary kind of life where you would just make it through life. Jesus came to truly give you life to the full. And the really cool thing about God is that when it comes to the things that are on your heart the most, God cares about it just as much, if not more, than you do. Like, he wants you to have a vibrant relationship with him. He wants you to have a healthy marriage. He wants you to be free financially. He wants you to know what it looks like to physically, mentally, and emotionally be whole. God is really cool because he wants not for you to settle for less, but to experience his best. John 10, 10 kind of life. Life to the full. That's what this whole series is about. How do we get traction and gain momentum in the areas of our life that matter most? And today what we're going to be talking about is an area that I believe is the most important area of your life outside of your relationship with God. And it's the relationship, if you're seeking this in life, if you're pursuing this in life, it's the relationship that you're going to have or that you do have with your husband or wife. Today we're going to be talking about momentum in relationships. Anyone excited? (laughs) Anyone nervous? Sweaty palms? See, the truth is, other than Jesus, your spouse is the most influential relationship in your life. And I truly believe this, that if you win in this relationship, you win in life. It's that powerful. It's that impactful. It can make or break you. That's why it says that the enemy in John 10, 10 comes to steal kill and destroy what matters most to God. And could this not be any more clear than when it comes to our relationship in marriage? When we think about it, people are struggling so much in our culture today, not knowing what to do or how to go about a relationship, be it a dating kind of thing, or what it looks like to build a God-honoring marriage. And it's not just for young people today, man. I talk to people in their 50s and in their 60s that are still struggling in this arena in life. And for many of us, it's because we don't know how to build it. Maybe we didn't have a parent that modeled it to us. Maybe we haven't been taught the principles of healthy relationships. Your parents didn't tell you. Our culture deceives us. And so for many of us, we're left confused and wandering. And it's it's almost like for some of us, this whole building a healthy relationship, building a healthy marriage is similar to what it feels like to get something from Ikea in the mail. (laughs) And you just start building it without looking at the directions because it's like you, you just don't, you can't understand it. Or you just don't take time to read it. And you're like, ah, oh, whatever, I'll just build this desk. It's a bunch of like weird things. We put it together. And then, and then all of a sudden, you're, you're like, like you sit on the chair that the desk came with and poof, you just like fall to the ground. Or like you go to write something and it's like all janky to one side. And you're like, ah, I guess this will work. And, and, and that's how for many of us our marriages are. Like we didn't have a model. We don't know what God's word says. And so we built something that works, but does it really? Is it God's goal? Are we settling for less than God's best? Maybe, maybe we've 
been confused. And it, it's, it's, it's really interesting. Scripture says that Satan is the father of confusion. And he tends to hold the most power over your life, the most influence over your life in the area that you're most confused. That's the reason why you can kill it at business, but suck at relationships. Because you know how to kill it at business. You know how to work a spreadsheet and a strategical plan. You know how to uh, um, manage employees, but you come home and you don't know how to have a conversation with your wife. The enemy would love to confuse us in the area that God wants us to have the greatest influence in culture and have the most impact for generations to come. He's confusing us. What is marriage? What's it about? What's its purpose? How do we build it in a way that not only honors God, but produces life to the full for you and everyone else around you? The reason why I know that, that, that this is an area where we're most confused and there's, there's impact and influence is because in Orange County, we have one of the highest divorce rates out of any county in the nation. 72% of marriages that start in this county do not last. Many of us here have been affected by the ramifications of that. Maybe for some of us, it's, it, it's, it's not that we're saying we're giving up on marriage, Maybe you're here today, and if you're really honest, you'd say we share the same address, but we don't share really much else in life. We live together, but we're not a team. We, we, we coexist, but we're not co-partners in the kingdom of God. I believe that God has something so much more for you. And, and if we can start living by the principles of God, I believe we can start avoiding so many of the problems of life. Listen to the words of Jesus again in John 10, 10. What could be possible for you, your life, your marriage, and everything else that comes from it? Life to the full. See, sometimes people will say that the, the divorce rate you know, generally is 50%. And it's the same in the church. Have you heard that? It's the same in the church. Christians are no different. But what they don't look at is the actual research. The actual research is not true. That's not true. 50%. When they just say, the church, when you study people that are in marriages where they're honoring God, they're they're showing up to church consistently. They're bringing their kids. They're serving other people. They're living generously. They're, 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 they're connecting in community. Those people, the Pew Research has done research on those people that are actually following Jesus in their marriage. Guess what the percentage of divorce rate is? Less than 5%. Less than 5% of those couples that are honoring God by following Jesus in these different areas of their lives, less than 5%. That's amazing. Like that's stats, that's science. It's cool. Like God's way actually works. Man, imagine the impact on culture that we could have if marriages just went the distance. We're faithful, committed. Imagine what would happen if we shared a vision and a mission in life. Think about the purpose that you could have in your marriage. Imagine giving a model to your kids that you didn't receive. Imagine the generational impact that could come from it. So today what I want to do is I want to talk to you about my observations. When it comes to my experience in life in this arena, when it comes to my observations as a pastor, when it comes to leading a young adult ministry for years, when it comes to being married, uh, when it comes to counseling couples, most importantly, when it comes to God's word, what do I see modeled in relationships that don't just make it, but make a difference? If you're taking notes, I want you to write down three must-haves in 
any relationship. This is if you're looking. This is if you're dating. This is if you're engaged. This is if you're already married. Three must-haves in your relationship. The first thing, if you're taking notes, is calling. Everyone say calling. 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 The thing that I observe when it comes to couples that don't just coexist, they don't just survive, but couples that are thriving, couples that are living this life and life to the full, couples that are joyful, couples that are blessed, is that they have a unified calling. They have a shared calling. See, what does calling mean? Calling means what you're going after in life. And we all in this room have to acknowledge that something in your relationship is first. Something in your relationship comes first. What are you going after more than anything? Because, because, because there can only be one thing that matters most. Is it, is it the other person? Are they first? How about your kids? I see that a lot. Have your kids become first? Money, success, does that come first? Safety, security, and comfort, does that come first? Image, what I project, does that come first? We have to acknowledge, without guilt and without shame here today, we have to acknowledge and do some soul searching, take stock of what truly comes first in my life and in my relationship because whatever comes first will determine what comes next. In fact, Scripture says it this way. Jesus said, but seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness. And all these, here's what comes next, all these things will be given to you as well. Matthew chapter 6, in context, was when Jesus was talking about all the things of life. People were asking, what are we going to eat? What are we going to wear? What are we going to do to make money? How are we going to thrive in life? And Jesus said, don't worry about that. Seek me first. And whatever comes next will be given to you as well from my hands. It's what you actually want. So my question for you is, is God truly first in your relationship? Is God truly first in your life? God first isn't supposed to just be a cute statement on your Instagram bio. Like, is it seen in your way of life? See, from from day one, Taryn told me that. I mean, and honestly, she didn't just um, say it. I saw it. Like, I saw when I came with her to uh, Young Life, I saw her pour into these amazing young men and women with special needs. Saw her selflessly put them first. We, 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 we went to church together when we were dating and I, I saw that she was more concerned with another person in the room than me being in the room. She was putting him first. I saw and I knew it from day one. And she told me, she just said, man, if, if this relationship gets between me and my relationship with God, then it's, it's, it's not going to happen. It's, it's so important that we don't just say it, but we, we see it. Because your foundation will determine your future. Whatever you put first will determine what gets built in your future. A lot of times we talk about finding the one in marriage. And I want to actually, um, I want to flip that around. God is to be your one and your spouse is to be your two. Okay. A lot of times we put our spouses as one or our kids as one or other things in life as one. And then we add in God, maybe he's seven, maybe he's 12 on the list. And we wonder, why are we stressed? Why are we worried? Why are we anxious? Why isn't there joy in our relationship? Why do we just work and, and 
like we're just chauffeurs with our kids and then you know we veg out on Netflix and we're separate rooms and on our separate phones doing our separate lives. Why? Because God is not first. The definition of idolatry is not just like, I think a lot of times when we think about idolatry, we think about just like people that live in black houses doing like witchcraft. Like that's witchcraft to me. You know, like a cat. Uh, I love cats. God doesn't. Cats aren't mentioned in the Bible. Um, where was I? Idolatry is putting anything before God. And normally it's a good thing. That's why it's deceiving. Is God truly first? Because I'm telling you, when you put God first, Jesus says, I will bless you with everything else for your life and your relationship. Amos 3, 3 says, can two people walk together without agreeing on the direction? <laughs> it's a rhetorical question. See, it's not just one person in the relationship that's putting God first. That's not enough. It's, it's two people that agree upon a, a common mission. That's what God's after because that's where the health and the life and the growth is. It's not just sharing an address. It's sharing a mission. We're going after Jesus together. We know our mission. We know our purpose. Without a compelling vision, I'm telling you, it's just a matter of time where you're going to lose purpose and drift apart. If I was going to ask you, what's your marriage about this morning? What would you say? Like, what's it about? What's the vision? What's the mission? What are you going after? One of the greatest tragedies in marriage is people who are together, but they're not a team. Every team has a mission to accomplish, a challenge to overcome, and a game plan for victory. See, you'll know God is first when your purpose goes beyond your relationship. See, for Taryn and I, uh, our, our mission is very clear in life. We're so thrilled that it's like she's the, the, the greatest gift that, that God could give me, right? But marriage is not the goal. It's a gift. Jesus is the goal. We love our children, but they're a gift. They're not the goal. Jesus and his kingdom is the goal. Our mission is what? Our mission in our marriage is to see the lost saved, the saved ignited, and the world changed. That's what we're about. Why do most people get married? Most people get married to be happy. Happiness is go after mission. And that joy and that fulfillment and that happiness will be in your life no matter what season you find yourself in. What's your mission? Is there a purpose that's bigger than your own marriage? See, I'll be really honest, man. Our, our marriage is not perfect. Our relationship, I mean, we go through the same things that you guys go through. But I'll be honest, we don't fight a lot. And the reason why I think we don't fight a lot is because, um, you know, a lot of couples are, are looking at each other because the mission of their marriage doesn't go beyond their relationship. And so when you're just looking at one another, it's really easy to criticize to complain, to nitpick, to argue, to make mountains out of molehills. But that's how the saying goes, right? And I was like, shoot, did I say that opposite? <laughs> Where are my moles at? Help me out. <laughs> but, but check this out. 
when you stop just staring at each other and making your marriage about your marriage and you go, man, my marriage is about the kingdom of God. My marriage is about saving lost people. My marriage is about serving the poor. My marriage is about helping others in need. My marriage is about sharing the gospel. My marriage is about getting people into heaven to make heaven crowded. My marriage is about something bigger than my marriage. You're both looking this way and you don't have time to fight. It's not perfect, but I'm telling you, so many problems will be eliminated in your marriage when you have a shared purpose. The beautiful thing about being a team is that we know who the coach is. See, the cool thing is when God's the head coach, he forms the team, and then as a team, he gives you different assignments. Sometimes those assignments are for a lifetime. Sometimes those assignments are for a season. It's beautiful. It's like, God, you're the head coach. We're on mission. We're a team. We're doing this thing together. We're moving forward. What's our assignment? God gave us the assignment of church planting. And and let me just tell you, God's assignments almost always will come with the reaction from other people that are not in your marriage Um, laced with fear. Don't do that. That's too big for you. Don't do that. That's going to put too much of a stretch and a strain on your relationship. Don't do that. You're going to be uncomfortable. Don't do that. He doesn't make enough money. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't move there. Don't go there. Don't, don't, don't do that because people are thinking with common sense, not spirit sense. When we planted the church, you know, some people were like, don't, don't go after that because planting a church crushes people. It's going to crush your marriage. No, it's empowered our marriage. It's given our marriage purpose. Something on our heart that's always been bigger than our marriage is, is vulnerable, vulnerable children out there in the world. Fatherless homes, foster care and adoption. We've had people say, don't, don't go after that. It's going to put a strain on your marriage. No, it's actually a glue for our marriage. See, the things that God puts on your heart will always be bigger than what you can accomplish on your own. That's why if he calls you to be married, he's going to put you together, weave you together as a team to accomplish things that you can't do on your own. Make your marriage about something bigger than your marriage. Let me tell you this. This is so important when it comes to what your kids are watching. And I'm not just talking about Netflix. I'm not just talking about YouTube. See, the model that you put in front of your kids shouts way louder than any message you speak to your kids. We can say, God's first. Hey, kids, God, God is first. But then on a Sunday, sports are first. I'm not hating. I'm just saying. this is So, so they're like, you're saying God is first, but, but you're totally making decisions for my life where sports are first. Beach is first. Money is first. Success is first. Vacations are first. All of this stuff is amazing. I love this. I love everything I just talked about. Right, right. But the model you put in front of your kids will always speak far louder than any message you tell to your kids. God first. Man, sure, we have special and different interests, separate interests, but we have one common mission. We're here to see the lost saved, the saved ignited, and the world changed. So that's the first key to any relationship that's going to experience life to the full is calling, a shared calling. Secondly, character. I say that word with a little bit of trepidation because, I, you know, you've heard, me, you've heard people talk about character before, Right? Character counts. Sometimes it's kind of like white noise, right? We're going to talk about character and why character matters. Um, But let me just tell you, if you want to be edgy in 2023, have character. 
You want to be different? Live with integrity. Like, do you want to be like, like so nonconformist, anti-establishment? Follow God. Obey God. Do what you're going to say. Be faithful. Be committed. <laughs> That's literally the edgiest, most radical thing you can do nowadays. Stable is the new sexy. Somebody write that down. It's good. It's good, John. Thank you. Follow through. Oh my God, I love follow through. Faithfulness. Are you kidding me? How cool is that? See, because lack of character and integrity is so common nowadays. God has not called us to be common. God's called us to be different because we're called to make a difference. Psalm 119, the psalmist says, joyful are people of integrity. Catch that. Joyful. The word joyful there means blessed at the deepest possible level. Prospered at the deepest possible level. Joyful are people of integrity who follow the instructions of the Lord. Joyful are those who obey his laws and search for him with all their hearts. They don't compromise with evil and they walk only in his paths. What's integrity? Integrity is doing what I say I'll do. Do you guys know that we serve and we love the God who is in integrity? In Genesis, God said, and it was. Jesus said, I'm going to die for your sins. Three days later, I'm going to come back from the dead. And then he pulled it off. Jesus lives in integrity. What Jesus said, he did. To follow Jesus is to live in integrity. Here's what this looks like in relationships. When I say I'm with you, I'm with you and you alone. When I say I'm for you, I'm for you. I got your back. When I say I love you, I love you and you alone. When I say I do, through thick and thin, rich or poor, healthy or sick, I mean I do. Character, integrity, the lost art of what brings true life. I think it was... Uh, Honestly, like the most refreshing thing in my relationship with Taryn, I was so used to um, like the games. You guys know what I'm talking about? The games. It's like you shoot a text and you're like, should I wait three hours, four hours? I don't want to be too desperate, but I don't want to be too aloof. I was so used to all these games that were being played. And um, man, I just remember Taryn just like, no games, no smoke and mirrors. It was so attractive. It was so refreshing. Because I was like, hey, do you, do you want to go out like after date one, which went surprisingly well. And I was like, hey, do you want to like go out for another like plate of food? You know, I was like, I blacked out on the voicemail. She called me right back. It's like, she called me right back. Yes, let's do it. Let's go. There was consistency, like what she said she meant. If she said that she was going to text, she texted. If, 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 if she couldn't do something, then she didn't, right? There was integrity. There was character. There weren't games. There was follow-through, and it produced joy. A lot of us have frustration in our relationships because we lack integrity. I love this. It says that these kind of people that experience this joy in relationships, they don't compromise with evil. They walk only in God's paths. Now, I, I understand that, that we're all broken. We're sinful. We mess up. And Jesus is the perfect fulfillment of everything that we need to obey God's commandments. But what I will say is that 
if you're serious about following God, you're going to be serious about integrity. Because your future will be determined by the foundation that you build today. And you cannot build a life of righteousness in the future on a foundation of sin today. Couples, um, man, a lot of couples come to me from time to time wanting me to bless their marriage. As a pastor, you know, I officiate weddings every once in a while. I used to do a lot more. And, um, it's with kids and everything. They take some time up. But they're like, hey, can you bless my marriage? And I'm like, um, I'm thinking to myself, no, I can't. Because what a lot of people want to do is they want to take all these shortcuts to God, to life, to health. And then they just want me to come in and bless it. Like, like, like think about it for a moment. Is that how it works with anything else? It's like, it's like you doing a renovation project on your house or building a house and taking shortcuts in the construction process the entire time and you finally have the appointment with the inspector and you're like, I just want you to approve it all. Don't even have to look at it. Don't, don't look at the wiring or the plumbing. But, but, but down the road, it's like you don't want to actually live in that home. Like, you don't want to actually live in a home where you're stressed about the sewage. You're wondering if the roof is going to cave in on you at any moment. Do not take shortcuts when it comes to your character and your integrity. Build a foundation upon God, His will, and His way when you're single and when you're already married. If you're single, by the way, what does this look like? Become the person that you want to marry. Start serving right now. Deal with struggles in your own life, addictions and hang-ups. Follow through on your commitments because who you're, per you're pursuing should always match who you're increasingly becoming. So if you're looking for generosity, live generously. If you're looking for purity, live Purely. And I'll just say this. Um, just one quick thing for singles. Don't look for potential. Look for pattern. A lot of times we think we, we can just um, find that person that will become a different person down the road. And we know that that never happens. Look at pattern. How do they treat the server at the restaurant? How, how are they with the people that they're most comfortable with, their family and their friends? Um, what, what, what does their work ethic look like? Whoa! Singles. If they don't show up for work, there's no promise they'll show up for you. I thought I'd get more of an amen out of the ladies on that one, but... You can try. <laughs> and, and if you're married, I just want to tell you, um, Song of Solomon 2.15, he says, catch for us the foxes, the little foxes that ruin the vineyards, our vineyards that are in bloom. Watch out for the little foxes in your relationship. The little things. See, these, these, these foxes, they would, um, they would eat the blossoms before the blossoms in the vineyard would fall to the ground so that the seeds would um, dig deep into the soil and, and would bear fruit for a new generation to rise up for a harvest to come. And these, these little foxes at night would come in and they would eat the blossoms. What are the little things in your life, the little things in your relationship that are eroding your character and destroying the trust that you have, destroying the joy in your life. Watch out for the little things that may seem insignificant. It may seem not that important, but it's incredibly important because victory 
in your marriage is not one thing and suddenly you're undefeated. It's small things continually repeated. Little foxes may seem harmless, but they can destroy everything. Little, maybe nitpicky comments or, or, or talking negative about each other or criticizing one another or maybe it's being controlling. Maybe it's, maybe it's being passive aggressive. Um, maybe you're keeping a scorecard for all of these areas that you've put effort in in your marriage and what they haven't. And it's causing bitterness and resentment to rise up. Maybe the little foxes, they seem harmless, but they have serious impact and weight. Look more like what you look at on your phone when you're alone. What you do when you're on a business trip. I'm getting real, man. Like stuff that you go to when you're triggered or when you're lonely or when you're you're angry I'm telling you what happens is it, it it will it will ruin the vineyard and the harvest that can come from it you'll end up in a state where you're going we're not compatible we weren't supposed to be together I'm just going to give up and give in there is a harvest that God wants for your life and your marriage and what it looks like is seeds falling to the ground called your kids and their kids and their kids generations are at stake so pay attention to the little things that may seem harmless the little compromises the little justifications the little breaches of integrity because over time it will build up into something that will cause the entire house to collapse but if you build your foundation on god then he will produce a brand new cycle of generational blessing i'm talking new generational curses and, and habits and cycles broken where divorce isn't even an option anymore. Where addictions are broken. Where they, they see parents that are faithfully committed to one another, choosing one another each day. It's generations that are at stake. just feel like, um, I just feel like the Lord wants us, no matter what's coming against us right now, and maybe, maybe you're under attack in your marriage, maybe you're just feeling the stress, maybe it's been little things that have turned into big things, maybe, maybe you, you, you feel hopeless because You've been trying to pursue it God's way, but that person hasn't come into your life. And there are whispers and lies from the accuser saying that you're worthless, that you're, you're never going to ha have that person that comes into your life. You might as well just give up. You might as well just compromise. Do not settle for less than God's best. And I just feel like no matter who you are in this room today and where you're at, God wants me to prophetically declare to you that your past is nothing compared to the future that he has in store for you. That you can choose today to put him first. You can choose today to believe a new story. You can choose today to do it God's way and not the world's way. You can choose today to surrender all of the guilt, all of the shame, all of the stuff that's holding you back because you are a new creation in Jesus Christ and there is a fresh start for anyone. You can become a born again virgin today. You can become a new creation in Christ Jesus. You can become whole. Your marriage 
may have ended, but I'm telling you, God can restore your soul. God can bring something new into your life. There is story after story in this room where what the enemy tried to use for evil, God used for the good. God is a healer. God is a redeemer. God is a, he's a restorer. God is the one who is victorious. No weapon formed against you, your marriage, and your family will prosper. Hallelujah. I don't care what the culture is saying. Jesus will be glorified in your relationship. Jesus will be glorified in your home. Jesus will be glorified in this city. The divorce rate is going to be flipped upside down because we're going to follow Jesus. We're going to give him glory. We're going to put him first. We're going to be faithful to our covenant that we've made to one another. Through thick and thin, we will serve the Lord. Let's all stand. Yeah, across this place, I just feel like the Lord is restoring hope again. The Lord is restoring joy again. The Lord is restoring purpose for your life and your marriage again. Areas that have been dead and dry are coming back to life. And so, man, if you just want to, like, close your eyes for a moment, I, I, I just want to, I want to throw something out there. Just close your eyes for a moment. If you want to put God first in your life, if you're not saved, if you're not in right relationship with God, eyes closed, and you're saying, man, I, 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 don't, want to, I, I don't want to just put God first in my relationship someday. I want to put God first in my life today. Thank you, Lord. And, and, and I'm not sure that I've put him first. I don't know if I'm saved. Man, I want to give you that invitation right now. If that's you, and you're ready to go all in for Jesus Christ, to have your sins forgiven. You want to repent from your sins, which means to turn away from your old life and to become a new creature, a new creation, to be born again into the family of God, to have a home in heaven and a purpose to live for here today. Would you just shoot up your hand right now and say, that's me? Yeah, I want that. Yep, thank you. I want that. I'm all in. Yep, thank you. I'm all in. Yep, right there. Jesus, I give you my life. Just keep your hand up because I want to pray for you right here. Jesus, I give you my life over here. Jesus, yep, right here. Jesus, I give you my life. I'm all in. Uh, yep, right there. A new story. A new story. I'm stepping into a brand new future. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hands all over. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And then secondly, eyes closed. Today's the day where I put God first in my relationship. No guilt, no shame. Just put your hand up. I'm putting God first in my relationship. No guilt, no shame. I'm putting them first again. Maybe, maybe your marriage is phenomenal, and you're saying, man, I'm, I'm, I'm just doing it. I'm, I'm recommitting my relationship to you. Maybe things have slipped. Maybe things have become comfortable or calloused. Maybe you've grown distant. I'm putting God first in my relationship. Yeah, hands all over the place. I'm putting God first in my relationship. I bless every hand that is raised. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that you would experience God's presence in your relationship like never before this week. That you would experience the bond of Christ that goes deeper than any physical bond or any emotional bond, the bond of Christ. Yeah, for, for a fresh calling upon your marriage that goes beyond your marriage. Yeah, for God assignments to come into your life. Yeah, I bless you with the grace of Jesus Christ. I bless you with the glue that comes through the Holy Spirit bond. I bless you with fresh dreams in your marriage, a fresh passion for one another. I, yeah, I bless your date nights this week. I bless your quiet time this week that you will be refreshed in God's presence and you will find fresh vision in your relationship in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen, amen. Well, we love you guys so much. Hey, we have our prayer team down here. We would love to pray with you. So if you need prayer for anything in life, it doesn't have to be about 
marriage or relationships. It can be. It can be about anything. Our prayer team, would you just raise your hand, guys? We've got kind of a new thing. Please come and receive prayer. We have our prayer team. If you just want to linger and worship in God's presence, feel free to linger. Have an amazing Sunday and week. We love you guys. God bless you.